In this video, we'll be covering gas stoichiometry. In a previous unit, we've already talked about how to how to convert between grams and moles. Uh, so we, you've already seen this before, how to go from grams of one substance to gram of another substance. If you're a little shaky of the grams and mole conversion, go and watch the stoichiometry video on grams and moles, and then come back to this video, and it'll make a lot more sense. So with gas stoichiometry, the only thing that's new is now we have a conversion between the, the moles of the gas and the liters of gas. So liters get involved in the stoichiometry process. And this is the entire flow chart of, of gas stoichiometry. So you can see we're just incorporating liters into here. A is just what we're, what we're given, the substance that we're given, and then B is what the substance that we're trying to solve for. Don't worry, this will make a lot more sense when we look at this example later. So let's talk about how do we do the, the mole to liter conversion. Well, that depends on what conditions you have. So there's two situations. You, the, the problem could be at you can the problem could be at STP, which just means that it's at standard temperature and pressure, meaning the pressure is one atm and the the temperature is zero degrees Celsius or two hundred seventy three degrees Kelvin. So when you're at STP, you can just directly convert between moles and liters, but moles to liters by multiplying by twenty two point four, and then liters to moles you would just divide by twenty two point four, and that's because at STP one mole of gas takes up 22.4 liters. But if you're trying to do a mole to liter conversion or a liter to mole conversion, and it's not a STP, then what you're going to have to do is use the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. And we'll go through three situation, three example problems. One where you are doing a, a conversion at STP, one at not STP, and a simple one where you're just going from liters to liters. So let's start with the first problem. We're given a balanced chemical reaction here between gasoline and oxygen, a, a combustion reaction. And we're asked if four moles of the gasoline, which is the octane, are burned, then what volume of oxygen is needed if the pressure is this and the temperature is this? Well, let's start by identifying what's our A and our B. Our A is what's given. So we're given a finite amount of gasoline. So we're going to call our gasoline, or let's just write A equals the gasoline, the octane. And then B is the substance that we're trying to solve for, which in this case is oxygen. We're trying to find the volume of oxygen. Let's also label where we are in the flow chart and where we're, where we're going. Well, we have moles of A. We're starting here. And we're trying to get to liters of oxygen, so liters of B. So in this case, we, we, have two, um, we can really go two ways, but let's just follow the, the arrows. Let's go this way from mole A to mole B, and then from mole B to liters B. But before we do that, let's also consider, are we going to, are we at STP or are we not at standard temperature and pressure? Well, the current pressure is 0.93 atm and the standard pressure is 1 atm. So we're not at standard temperature and pressure, which means that we're going to have to use the ideal gas law. So let's start the process. We'll start with the, the moles of the given. So we have four moles of the octane, C at H18. Then we're going to convert from moles of the octane, the gasoline, to moles of B, which is the oxygen. And to do that, we multiply by the mole to mole ratio. Whatever is on top automatically has to go to on the bottom, so we can cancel it out. We're going to put the C8H18 on the bottom. And we want to get to moles of oxygen. So whatever you want goes on top. Moles of O2 goes on top. And then for the mole to mole ratio, you just look at the balanced chemical reaction, the coefficients in front. So there's two moles of gasoline. We're going to put a two over here. And there's 25 moles of O2. So this is just saying that every time you consume two moles of the gasoline, you're going to also consume 25 moles of the O2. So we just completed the first step. We just went from mole A to mole B. Now we have to convert mole B to liters B. Well, before we do that, let's just cross out the units. You can see that we currently have moles of, of O2. Um, if you're trying to go from moles to liters or liters to moles, and you're not at STP, you're going to have to use the ideal gas law. So this is where you have to actually stop the dimension analysis, and, and then we'll, we'll have to continue the ideal gas law. So we're going to stop here, and we'll figure out how many moles of O2 we have. So this will just be 4 multiplied by 25, which is 100, divided by 2, which is 50. So we'll get 50 moles of O2. Now that we have the moles, we can convert it to liters by using the ideal gas law PV equals NRT. Our goal here is to solve for the V. So to solve for the V, we just divide P by both sides. Both sides by P. So this gives us volume equals NRT 
divided by divided by p. Okay, and then now let's just plug in the numbers. So the moles of the oxygen is 50. That's what that's what we got earlier. And then R is this ideal gas constant, 0 0.08206. I'm not going to write the liters. I mean the units here just to save some space. The temperature must always be in Kelvin. Our temperature right now, well, just in degrees Celsius. So to convert degrees Celsius to Kelvin, we have to add 273. So we'll do 35 plus 273, and then that gives us 308 degrees Kelvin. And then the pressure has to be an ATM, atmosphere, and it's already an atmosphere. So we'll, we'll just plug that in, 0.593 ATM. Now just enter this into the calculator, and we'll get the final volume in liters. So we'll take the top three numbers, multiply them, and then divide it by the bottom number. And then that comes out to be 1,326 liters. Um, not worrying about sig figs here, but if we did consider sig figs, we have three sig figs, three sig figs, and three sig figs. So then this would just become 1,330 liters. That's what the answer would be for, for this question. Now let's modify this question a little bit to make it such that we're at STP. Well, what if it says the pressure is exactly 1.00 ATM? So we are at the standard pressure, and then the temperature was exactly 0 degrees Celsius. So we're at standard temperature. Well, since we're at STP, we can just directly convert between the moles of oxygen and the liters of oxygen by using the conversion factor 22.4. So let's, let's do that. Let's get rid of the ideal gas law. We don't have to use that section because we're at STP. And... We'll begin right here. So we we already done the first part earlier. We took the mo the four moles of gasoline and we converted to moles of oxygen by using the mole-to-mole -mole ratio, which again you get by looking at the balanced chemical reaction. Now we have moles B, which is moles oxygen, to convert it to liters B at STP. You would just multiply by 22.4. You see moles to liters involves multiplying by 22.4. So you're gonna put Whenever something's multiplied, you put it on top, so it'll be 22.4 liters of oxygen for every one mole of oxygen. Because that's the conversion factor, 22.4 uh, liters per one mole. Then we can cross out the units, moles of oxygen goes away, and we're left with just liters of oxygen. And then we just enter this into calculator. So this would be 4 times 25 times 22.4 divided by 2 which comes out to be 1,120 liters. So you can see that the problem gas stoichiometry of STP is a, lot, is a lot easier because you can just do everything in one dimension analysis. You don't have to stop and then use the ideal gas like we did in the, in the first problem. Okay, now let's take a look at one more problem where we have to do a liter to liter conversion, which is actually the easiest type of gas stoichiometry problems. So here, the only thing that I changed is I started with four liters of, of gasoline instead of uh, four moles. So we're, we are starting with liters of gasoline A, and we're still trying to find the liters of oxygen, the volume of oxygen B. So here we're going from liters to liters, and that would just be using the volume ratio, which is essentially the same as the mole to mole ratio. And when you're going from liters to liters, it actually doesn't matter if you're at STP or not STP. It's always going to be the same process where you just multiply by the volume volume ratio. So let's execute this. We have four liters of the octane, the gasoline. We're going to multiply it by the volume volume ratio. Remember, whatever it's on top goes on bottom. So we'll have liters of C8H18 on the bottom. And we're trying to get the liters of oxygen. So the liters of O2 will go on the top. And the, lead, the, the volume volume ratio, it's pretty much the same as the mole to mole ratio. And you just get that by looking at the equations. So we have two liters of C8H18 for every 25 liters of O2. So you can see it's just, just the same ratio. And then we can just stop here because you can see the liters of C8H18 will cancel out and we're left with just the liters of O2. And we've done this earlier. This is four times 25, which is 100 divided by two, which comes out to be 50.0 liters of O2. And those are the main stoichiometry, gas stoichiometry problems that you'll see. Uh, you'll see one, where you have to go from either grams or moles to to volume to any any of these combinations here. But if it's at STP, you can just use the 22.4. If it's not at STP, you have to stop and do P B goes NRT. Um, and if you have you can also be asked when you go from volume to volume. 
and that would just be using the mole to mole ratio or the volume ratio, which is the same. Actually, maybe I'll show you just one more where we have to use the PV equals NRT because I think that one can get a little confusing. Okay, let's try this one. It's the same balanced chemical reaction. This time we're asked about the grams of the water if we started with 20 liters of oxygen. So we're given a finite amount of oxygen. That's going to be your A are given. A is going to be O2. B is the, the substance we're solving for, which is H2O. And we're starting with the volume of oxygen. So we have liters of A. And we're trying to get to grams of water. So we're trying to get to grams of B. Um, here, probably the easier way to do this is to go to go right, up, and right. But since I'm, that that wouldn't require us to do it, a, a actually let's yeah let, actually let's do that. I think that that would be the easier way. So we'll we'll, we'll do that because we're not at STP. You see that the, the temperature is not zero degrees Celsius and the pressure is not one atm. So let's we'll start with the given twenty liters of O2. We'll multiply by the liter liter ratio. We'll put liters of O2 on the bottom. So we can cancel out that to get out and then liters of H2O on top. There is 25O2 and there's 18 H2O. Then we'll convert um, liters of we'll convert liters of H2O to moles of H2O. This is actually where we have, we have to stop and get the moles because whenever we are converted between liters and moles, not STP, we have to use the ideal gas law. So we'll do 20 times 18 divided by 25. That's 14.4 liters of H2O. Okay, now that we have the, the volume, we have to get the moles of the H2, H2O. So to solve for the moles, we just divide both sides by RT. So we get moles equals PV divided by RT. Let's plug in the numbers. Pressure, 1.3 atm. Volume is what we got right here, 14.4 liters of H2O. R is just the gas constant, 0 0.08206. And temperature has to be in degrees Kelvin. So we'll add 273 to negative 10. That'll be 263 degrees Kelvin. Let's get the moles. And that should give you 0.867 moles of H2O. Now that we have moles of H2O, we get we got liters of H2O, moles of H2O. We can just convert this to grams of H2O by multiplying by the molar mass. So we'll use the moles. And then multiply by the molar mass of H2O, which is 18.016 approximately. That many grams for every one mole. And then you can see the moles of H2O cancels out. And we are left with just the grams of H2O which will equal 15.6 grams of H2O. And that's the, the final example of gas stoichiometry. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.